Com. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org number 3030. The following program is a paid presentation. The views and or opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of KWAM. Welcome to the Variety Hour, where local leaders talk Memphis. Listen to you move your mind. I bet you come way down south. Now don't tell me, let me guess. You from the town that I love. This is the Memphis Real Estate Hour with your host, Dean Harris, on KWAM. And now, here's your host, Dean Harris. All right, good morning. Welcome to the Memphis Real Estate Hour. I am your host, Dean Harris. I am with Crest Core Realty over on Summer Avenue. Uh, thank you guys for uh, tuning in here to the new voice, FM 107.9. Uh, you can also take us on the go on your smartphone at www.kwam990.com. And then, of course, we got Facebook Live. If you guys are tuning in on Facebook Live today, we, uh, we appreciate you uh, tuning in, watching us. If you miss any part of the show, you can go to the show's Facebook page, The Memphis Real Estate Hour, and you can uh, play back the video, make fun of us. You know, whatever you want to do. So uh, you can check that out after the show. I'll post that just a few minutes after the show, so it'll be up. Uh, guys, the Memphis Real Estate Hour concentrates on investing in Memphis real estate. Uh, we also focus on our residential real estate market. And I tell you every single show that I am an investor. So if you've got that old home that you need to sell quickly, a relative's got it, uh, you inherited it, it burned down, there's no drywall in it, there's roaches in it, <laughs> I don't care what it is. Uh, give me a call or text me. It's, it's either one's fine. 901 619 6170, and I'll be happy to get you a cash offer. Uh, a lot of people ask me, is that you know 10 cents on the dollar? No, it's not. It's it's definitely not a retail because you got some work that needs to be done to it. But these are fair fair offers. Close quick. Uh, so if, again, if you've got that crazy home uh, that you have no idea what to do with, just give me a call and I'll help you out with that. Um, Again, I mentioned Facebook Live. We're on the show. Uh, we're on Facebook Live. Go to the Memf uh, the Memphis Real Estate Hours Facebook page. Ask any questions. Uh, if we catch a question during the show, I'll be happy to answer it live on the air. So uh, feel free to do that. On last week's show, uh, Dan Butler and I from Crest Cool Realty, we discussed the do's and don'ts of investing in real estate me uh, in Memphis. So uh, if you've got questions about that, we it was a very popular show. I got a lot of feedback from that one. Uh, the do's and don'ts of investing in real estate in Memphis. You can go back to the Facebook page and check out the video from last week on uh, on that page. Today's show rundown, uh, investment of the week, I'm going to give you that. It's free money, as I like to call it. Uh, the listing of the week, and then uh, Dan Butler with Crest Corps is on the show again. We're going to be talking about financing investments and the different ways um, that you can finance and the different areas that you can go to uh, to, to obtain some financing. All right, investments of the week and listings of the week. I've got a couple here, so get your pens. Uh, get ready to write down some free money here. All right, let's start with um, let's start with a flip. I know a lot of people call me; they want flip opportunities. Dean, I want to flip a house. Dean, I want to flip a house. Well, here's here's one good one. Midtown is firecracker hot. Uh, the real estate. Uh, in that area, I mean, is sizzling hot, like nothing I've really seen. So I've got a good flip opportunity. It's a four-bedroom, two-bath home on Nelson Avenue, uh, 38104. The list price is $199. Uh, the retail value for this is going to push over 300 So uh, this is a great opportunity in the uh, Cooper Young subdivision. Again, uh, 2000 block of Nelson Avenue. That's 38104. This house has got four bedrooms, two baths, and we're over 2,000 square feet. We're about 2,100 square feet. So uh, give me a call on this one. This is something I can show you today. This is a listing of mine, and it is a great, great flip opportunity there in Midtown. Um, 1057 Whitehaven Lane. This is a great home over by Whitehaven High School. This could be used for rental or it could be used for a retail home. Uh, list price is $129.9, but it's been completely renovated. 
Uh, all the floors, walls, kitchen, all of that. Bathrooms have all been updated. This one also has got four bedrooms and two baths. Uh, and we are over 2,600 square feet. We're like right at 27. And this is in 38116. So 1,000 block of Whitehaven Lane, four bedrooms, two baths, uh, 2,700 square feet. It's been completely renovated for 129.9. This is a great either retail or, or a good little rental. You can rent this home for $1,100, $1,200. So uh, it's another good property over in Whitehaven. Uh, Old Quarry Road, 4437 Old Quarry Road. Three bedroom, one bath. This is in one one eight three eight one one eight. My favorite zip code to start in. Uh, three bedrooms, one bath. We're eleven hundred square feet on this property, and it's a six hundred dollar rental. Thirty six thousand nine hundred and ninety four dollars. Thirty seven grand is a pretty good price for a six hundred dollar rental. So three bedrooms, one bath. Old Quarry Road in three eight one one eight. It's another one. I mean, how many of these are we gonna give away? I don't know. I feel like I'm just free money. Out, I, out, <laughs> I think I'm <laughs> just giving out free money. All right, last one. One more today. Uh, 5136 Rolling Fields. This is over in Bartlett, 38134, near Covington Pike. Three bedroom, one and a half bath. This will rent for probably $1,100, $1,050, $1,189.9 is our sales price. This one is in great shape, move in condition. Uh, so if you're an investor out there and you were looking for a little bit higher end rental, this would be the one for you. Uh, again, it's 5,000 block of Rolling Fields, 38134. It's got three bedrooms, one and a half baths, and it's listed for eighty nine nine. So I've given you four good options today. Um, <clears throat> a little bit of a lower end rental, you got a couple of higher end rentals, and then I gave you that great flip opportunity. So I really think we're going to catch some traction with the flip. I get that continuously, all yeah. the time. People are asking me, "Hey, where I need a flip palace? I want to flip. I want to flip." <laughs> it's, the, it's the most popular thing in the yeah. world. I want to flip. I got to flip. That's I got to right. flip. Well, let's flip. Here it is. Here it is. 2,000 block of Nelson. One more time. 2,000 block of Nelson. 199.9. Four bedrooms, two baths. So 2,100 square feet. So don't ever say I didn't give you a flip. All right. Uh, we're going to take a real short break. .com. Call for cost information and conditions. Equal housing lender. Licensed in all 50 states. NMLSconsumeraccess.org. Number 3030. The following program is a paid presentation. The views and or opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of KWAM. Welcome to the Variety Hour, where local leaders talk Memphis. Listen to you, move your mind. I bet you come from way down south. Now don't tell me, let me guess. You from the town that I love best. Talk Memphis, I wish you would. Talk Memphis, you sound so good. Talk Memphis. This is the Memphis Real Estate Hour with your host, Dean Harris, on KWAM. And now, here's your host, Dean Harris. All right, good morning. Welcome to the Memphis Real Estate Hour. I am your host, Dean Harris. I am with Crestcore Realty over on Summer Avenue. Uh, thank you guys for uh, tuning in here to the new Voice FM 107.9. Uh, you can also take us on the go on your smartphone at www.kwam990.com. And then, of course, we got Facebook Live. If you guys are tuning in on Facebook Live today, we uh, we appreciate you uh, tuning in, watching us. If you miss any part of the show, you can go to the show's Facebook page, The Memphis Real Estate Hour, and you can uh, play back the video, make fun of us. <laughs> You know, whatever you want to do. So uh, you can check that out after the show. I'll post that just a few minutes after the show, so it'll be up. Uh, guys, the Memphis Real Estate Hour concentrates on investing in Memphis real estate. Uh, we also focus on our residential real estate market. And I tell you every single show that I am an investor. So if you've got that old home that you need to sell quickly, a relative's got it, uh, you inherited it, it burned down, there's no drywall in it, there's roaches in it, <laughs> I don't care what it is. Uh, give me a call or text me. It's, it's Either one's fine, 901-619-6170, and I'll be happy to get you a cash offer. Uh, a lot of people ask me, is that you know $0.10 cents on the dollar? No, it's not. It's it's definitely not a retail because you got some work that needs to be done to it. But these are fair fair offers, close quick. Uh, so, if, again, if you've got that crazy home uh, that you have no idea what to do with, just give me a call, and I'll help you out with that. Um, 
again, I mentioned Facebook Live. We're on the show. Uh, we're on Facebook Live. Go to the Mem- uh, the Memphis Real Estate Hours Facebook page. Ask any questions. Uh, if we catch a question during the show, I'll be happy to answer it live on the air. So uh, feel free to do that. On last week's show, uh, Dan Butler and I from Crestcore Realty, we discussed the do's and don'ts of investing in real estate me- uh, in Memphis. So uh, if you've got questions about that, we it was a very popular show. I got a lot of feedback from that one. Uh, the do's and don'ts of investing in real estate in Memphis. You can go back to the Facebook page and check out the video from last week on uh, on that page. Today's show rundown, uh, investment of the week, I'm going to give you that. It's free money, as I like to call it. Uh, the listing of the week, and then uh, Dan Butler with Crest Corps is on the show again. We're going to be talking about financing investments and the different ways um, that you can finance and the different areas that you can go to uh, to, to obtain some financing. All right, investments of the week and listings of the week. I've got a couple here, so get your pens. Uh, get ready to write down some free money here. All right, let's start with um, let's start with a flip. I know a lot of people call me and they want flip, oh, but now we're with a new warranty company, Choice Home Warranty. Brad, tell me about it. Uh, yeah, Dean, Choice has been an industry leader in direct consumer warranty sales. Now they've opened up a brand new real estate portal. Pricing begins at $420 and goes up to $550 with a low $65 trade call fee. We also have fabulous multi-year pricing, meaning you can get a five-year warranty for the cost of work. Call me at 901-870-2334 for more information. Thank you, Brad. Choice Home Warranty, we're happy to have them part of the Memphis Real Estate Hour. Scattered showers this morning, mostly cloudy and mild this afternoon. High temperatures in the mid and upper 80s, light southwesterly winds. Near 70 tonight and warming into the upper 80s for your Wednesday and Thursday. Smith Imports with more than 125 pre-owned Mercedes, all with remaining factory warranty. Sales, service, great financing rates. Low prices, high quality since 1985. Visit smithimports.com. I'm News Channel 3's Todd Demers. On The Voice, FM 107.9 and AM 990. Now you can listen and watch, too. Go to our website to listen online and see our studio cam, kwamthevoice.com. All right, welcome back to the Memphis Real Estate Hour. I'm your host, Dean Harris. I'm with Crest Cool Realty. Uh, I'd like to bring Dan Butler here into the studio this morning. Dan, how are you doing this morning? Good, how are you? <laughs> I was going to use it. I'm not going to use it. <laughs> it. It claps too long, man. It's like it's, it's an extra two seconds. How about seven. money? The money sign? Yeah. 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 yeah that's our, that, that's, we'll start using that on our, uh, on our investments of the investment week. Yeah. That's what, <laughs> investments of the week are coming up. That's oh, right. No kidding. <laughs> All right, uh, we're going to talk about financing investments this morning. We yeah. uh, we cover a bunch of topics here, so I mean we 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 get through we get through a good bit. Um, yeah, yeah, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna defer, but I'm gonna lean on you for this. This is one of your favorite topics. Absolutely, um, it's one of the areas of investments and or investing that you're really good at. You're really knowledgeable on creative ways and and different ideas. I mean. Who would have known that you could have bought all the houses that you guys have bought on owner financing, right? I yeah. Mean, going after somebody and giving them the option to do that. So, I can't wait to tell you about one last night. You got later on for yeah. me. Okay, good. All right, so, uh, all right. So let's talk about it. financing yeah. investments. When people when people first think, hey, I want to invest. I, if you don't have a couple hundred in cash, uh, mm-hmm. you're not out of the game. It just right. got to go. You got to go about it a little bit differently yep. than than just paying cash. So. Before we go to the bank, before we go and talk to anybody, uh, as we're sitting around the dinner table with the wife or, or uh, family, and we're discussing how to get started in this, what are some of the things that you would tell people, cover this, look at this, go through this before going to the bank? You know, for me, I think, uh, uh, you know, the biggest piece is like, how are you going to show income outside of the rental properties? Mm-hmm. Don't rely, you know, they're going to start with, they call it DSC, debt service ratio dsr debt service ratio or debt service coverage dsc yeah and uh so they're going to look at what you're you know where you're getting your income you do not want it in the old days when i first started you could put that rental income as part of quote your income and you still can but the banks aren't looking at that they want to know where's your where's your source of income you got a w-2 
Do you have, yeah. you know, like for you, you're in sales. Do yeah. you have uh, 1099s for the last three years that yeah. support <laughs> that you can be a consistent yeah. sales agent? They want to know you can pay for it if if something goes if wrong. If something goes wrong, right. they want to know that you're having that's right. a, an alternative way to pay for it versus the rent. So that that getting that cleaned up, you would think that's common sense, but some people, you know, some people go going so far as so many deductions, and they don't have the income on their statement, so they got to figure out how to show that income if that makes sense. That's that, so I'm a 1099, yeah. and that's part of a challenge with me if I borrow anything. Yeah, because you, you could have a hundred thousand dollar income but yeah. sixty thousand in, in deductions <laughs> You're right. because you own your own business so they tell me i only make 40 grand you only have 40 grand That's but right. really you know you, you know the way you set your business up it's much more than it's that. much more than that but yeah. the way your deductions which is a smart move but so figuring that out and then you know your credit score really needs to be you know buttoned up you know i i, I don't know banks don't really you know, I would say 700 plus when you're talking about investment property. I would think so. I haven't heard a banker just come out and say, here's a minimum. That's right. Now, with traditional mortgages, there are. There are. That's you right. Know, but they've got they've got minimums that they want on, on every deal. But, but I would think you need to get your credit cleaned up enough to where you're 700 plus right. um, kind of range. Um, and then just start working on your personal financial statement, you know, showing your assets and liabilities and really cleanly, you know, stay, take the time to really explain where your debts are, where your income's coming from, and what's that net result? Yeah. So, listing your four hundred one ks, your yeah, your everything. stocks. I had a uh, when I bought my first rental, I had the, the banker that I bought it. This was several several years ago, but he, he goes, uh, well, "Well, shoot me over a P and L, and I'll I'll take a look at it." <laughs> like P and L, P and L. What is that? <laughs> Sounds like. Do, some do you know what of, that is now? Yeah, profit <laughs> loss. But, come on, man. <laughs> he goes, "Shoot me over a P and I was like, "You know." Yeah, people, we always get these emails. PFS, we need your PFS for 2017. I'm, I get so many of those requests. PFS, personal financial statement. Yeah. So yeah, you really need to get that buttoned up. Um, you know, and then then you start thinking about what to consider. You know. Right. Um, yeah, things to consider is our next topic. So before going to the bank, credit yeah. score, your W two proof of income, uh, clean up your 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 personal financial statement. Make sure that you've you know, if you got a little credit card debt, pay that off. You know, what I mean, just clean, clean everything up. Have it as clean as you can before you take it to the bank. Um, lay out your assets and your liabilities, and then now it's you know, things to consider. So we're, we've we've cleaned up our credit. We've uh, we've got our proof of income. Yeah. Um, when we're considering doing this, what's what's some of the most important steps to either protect us or to really start our business? You know, I think you got to decide. You know. How do you want to protect your assets? Is that important to you? You got to got to talk through what's important to you. Is it protecting the assets? Is it um, a fixed rate? You know, interest rate? Is it the amortization? Uh, you got to think about your volume. How many you want to do? How fast that's going to be? Mm -hmm. um, what terms you want? You know, uh, do you want a relationship or just tra transaction? You know, and, and I think we need to spend a few minutes on that one. I think that's the key. If anybody said, what's the one thing that was the biggest difference for you all these years of being in this business is the relationships. With your you banks. Know, with your banks. Yeah, you know, Triumph so, is a big partner with you guys. Right. And they that's were just right. on a little earlier with yeah, them. Brighton shows. Bank's one. Triumph. Yeah. Brighton's, Brighton's been with us since very early on. Okay. You know, one of our sponsors uh, and Triumph and several others in, in the city. So, you know, I think that that's – as we talk through the different financing options, that'll keep playing out as far as that relationship piece. You know, it's, it's you would think it'd be a, a, a higher, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word, but you know, a character, this is more of a character thing than it is. I see. Does that makes yeah. sense versus yeah. a nuts and bolts yeah. system. You one, know, one thing I wanted to ask you that you said, you said asset protection. What, tell me what you mean by that. I, Sure. Some of our notes are talking about an LLC, but go dive into that a little bit when you say asset protection. So, with so when we start talking about the banks and the different financing options, some people will, will want it on your personal name. So then you got to start thinking, all right, what do I have in my personal name or what's in my asset? You know, if you're just starting out, you might not have anything. You know, if you're in <laughs> a school, nothing and to protect. Nothing to protect, <laughs> right? But as you get older, you got home equity, you got your cars, you got, you know, your house, whatever. And so you got to think, you know, do I put in everything in an LLC that I'm buying? So then in case I get sued or whatever, which is going to happen, it's not, it's, to me, it's not a matter of if, but when, if you get big enough, if you get big enough, yeah, happen. the statistics go up, you know, and then, um, you know, or do you have a talk to your insurance agent, put a balloon on your, you know, on your personal, 
um, or do you do both? So, again, when we get into the different financing options, some banks or some whatever vehicle you're using, some sometimes you can't use an LLC. So then you got to think about your backup plan. Yeah, because if you just opened it, it's got no business credit. They're not going to loan to an LLC, correct? And yes, correct. And also, you, you're not going to be able to get, uh, or some some people will not let you put it in an LLC. Really? They, they want it in your, you know, like the Fannie Mae type loans. That's got to stay in your personal. That's got to stay in personal name. That's the biggest hmm. issue is it for Fannie Mae loans. Is that yeah? Because like you know, we have a client that he's got ten, his mom's got ten, his brother's yep. got ten, or whatever. And he is exposed to all that. Yeah, he got sixty houses through himself, his wife, and different relatives. But so, what is this in this situation? What does he do to further protect himself? Then you use a bigger umbrella coverage. Umbrella, or? yeah, you can do an umbrella coverage. You know, you're, you're obviously going to have insurance on the house, liability, replacement cost. But I strongly recommend putting an umbrella around your personal. Yeah. You know, your personal assets, your home, maybe tie it into your homeowner homeowner's insurance. That's, that's right. why. So some some of those things to consider. Sure. Uh, d- terms. You mentioned terms here. Yeah. Um, what are some of the terms? We're going to go kind of next. I'm, we're live in the studio with Dan Butler with Crush Core Realty. We're talking about financing investments. So when it we talk about terms, what are some of the must-haves that you're looking for when you talk about terms? We're going to get into where we get this money and the different sources. But when we talk about terms and what you look for, uh, what are some of the highlights, like things that are must-haves for you? So, like for Douglas and I, <clears throat> we did not want thirty-year notes. We always right. wanted fifteen or less, and and the less was better, right? Because you're paying it off quickly. Right. That was one of our musts. Um, and then for us, one of one of our terms is we don't want to put money down. Yeah. However, which way we got to figure it out. You know, we want to keep our money. Now we're going to loan to just what the the house you know we bought it for. We're yeah. not going to look for money out and that kind of stuff. But one of our you know, things we you know, kind of die by the sword is we don't want to put money out of our pocket. Yeah. We want that money set to the side, you know, for the what ifs. Yep. And <clears throat> it's hard to do, you know, yeah. but it's it's doable. Does that give you leverage or does that cause you stress when it comes to your conversations with Brighton and Trump and whoever else? To, to have no money down? Yeah. Uh, it just has to cause causes creativity. Yeah. You know, the juices flow in of how are you going to do it. Yeah. So uh, what's, it's going to look like, you know, different deals. It's going to look, you know, different. So. And this rolls right into relationships versus uh, a transaction. just a transaction. I mean, yep. you've built a relationship with these banks for years. Yep. I, I'm trying uh, with everything that we do, with every investor I work with, with every vendor that I work with, is to build a relationship because I can't I, – I, this is a personal thing for me, but I can't stand starting over. You know, and I, what I mean by that is, if I've if I've nurtured a relationship with somebody and I've worked with them and everything went smooth, why in the world would I want to deviate from that and go somewhere else? Somewhere else. I mean, yeah. I you know what I'm saying? Like I, I right. enjoy working with the same lenders and closing attorneys yeah. and all these people that know me and know our business. Yeah, I um, call that the uh, uh, Mayberry effect. There you go. That's good. You know, just I know it's random. You know, but you know what I mean. But by I know that, exactly right? what you mean. You, you go down, sit down in the diner. They know exactly. What, they sit down and bring your your drink. Yeah. Your order. They know exactly what you want. Yes. So same thing with the attorneys, the uh, the banks. They know you what know, we expect. They, and what, what they we expect. Need. What we need. They're gonna watch out for you, and, and you just get plop it into a system. And that's that's, right. that's what I love about the relationship piece, right? So sure. Uh, we are talking financing investments this morning. Uh, we're going to take a real quick break. I've got Dan Butler live here in the studio with me this morning. So we talked about before going to the bank, things to consider. When we come back, we're going to talk about where we go to get this money. All right. You're listening to the Memphis Real Estate Hour on the new FM 107.9, The Voice. KWAM, streaming live at KWAMTheVoice.com. All right, guys, I'm here in the studio with Brad Sterling. Brad's been a part of the Memphis Real Estate Hour, but now we're with a new warranty company, Choice Home Warranty. Brad, tell me about it. Uh, Yeah, Dean, Choice has been an industry leader in direct consumer warranty sales. Now they've opened up a brand new real estate portal. Pricing begins at $420 and goes up to $550 with a low $65 trade call fee. 
We also have fabulous multi-year pricing, meaning you can get a five-year warranty for the cost of board. Call me at 901-870-2334 for more information. Thank you, Brad. Choice Home Warranty, we're happy to have them part of the Memphis Real Estate Hour. Investors or buyers, if you're looking for the best customer service and most competitive rates on a home loan, come to Brighton Bank. They offer a quick approval process, fast closing, and they even finance 85% of purchase price in most cases. At Brighton Bank, they work with every kind of loan. VA, FHA, USDA programs, traditional conventional financing programs, long-term fixed financial and bridge loans made easy. When it comes to home loans, Loans, they mean business. Call them today, 901-758-1740. That's Brighton Bank at 901-758-1740. Proxbox provides a unique solution for set of problems for real estate agents. The Proxbox solution provides a downloadable app for the agent and any prospective buyers. When the buyer visits the house, all the valuable information that the agent entered is available to the buyer. Getting the information to the buyers quicker means faster turnaround time for sales. Proxbox is the app that keeps selling and sets you apart from other agents. See how Proxbox can help you by visiting proxbox.me. Griffin, Cliff, Everton, and Mashmeyer PLLC is a full-service law firm with over 50 years of experience in the Memphis area. Real estate closings have continued to be the forefront of their law practice, which include residential, commercial, and development real estate transactions, drafting and negotiation of real estate contracts, and leases, business information, preparation of wills, probate, and estate planning. Their firm represents a number of builders, developers, investors, and local lending institutions and is approved to close transactions for most local banks and mortgage companies. In addition, they offer title search, title examination services, and title insurance to several well-established title insurance companies in the Memphis area, as well as Tennessee and Mississippi. They strive to offer services in a prompt and timely fashion while advising and representing clients in a zealous and professional manner. Should their offered services be of need, please contact William N. Griffin Jr. or any of their attorneys at 901 901- 752-1133. They can also be found online at www.gcemlaw.com or on Facebook. Is it a good time to buy or refi? Is it a buyer's market or a seller's market? Are interest rates going sky high soon? Hi, I'm Ludie Calloway, the mortgage lady at iBank Mortgage. I tell my customers to ask questions, get answers. So join me every Monday morning at 8, and I will tell you what's going on in today's still changing mortgage world. Remember, most people think about mortgages a few times in their lives. I think about them every single day. Tune in Mondays at 8. Scattered showers this morning, mostly cloudy and mild this afternoon. High temperatures in the mid and upper 80s, light southwesterly winds. Near 70 tonight and warming into the upper 80s for your Wednesday and Thursday. Smith Imports with more than 125 pre-owned Mercedes, all with remaining factory warranty. Sales, service, great financing rates. Low prices, high quality since 1985. Visit smithimports.com. I'm News Channel 3's Todd Demers. On The Voice, FM 107.9 and AM 990. KWAM, streaming live at kwamthevoice.com. Hi, welcome back to the Memphis Real Estate Hour. I'm your host, Dean Harris, with Crest Cool Realty. Will Nirvana bringing us back in to the the show? Old stuff. That's right. Isn't that amazing that we're saying it's that? Old, I know. I remember watching that video college, when it first right? came out. When, uh, uh, I was in college. Were <laughs> yeah. you in high school, middle school? <laughs> I'm, I'm a young bug, Dad. <laughs> yeah. I was in junior high. With that junior nah, high. I think uh, ninth or 10th grade. Yeah. Think. Old Nirvana. Um, all right, today we're talking about financing investments, the different ways you can do it, where you go and do it. Uh, the first segment there we we covered before you go in, before you go to the bank or to this lending institution, some of the things you can you need to go over, your credit score, your W-2, proof of income, uh, your personal financial statement, just yeah. laying out your assets and liabilities, really getting a clean picture yeah. of your uh, of your financing and your background, uh, things to consider, asset protection, whether you're in an LLC, um, things to go after when you're looking, fixed rate versus amortization schedules, 
um, terms, you know, different things that are specific to you as an individual. The biggest thing I took out of that was the relationship versus the transaction. I mean, yeah. you need to find a great partner when it comes to this. If you're going to be doing multiple loans That's and right. multiple properties, I think that what I took out of there was the relationship, relationship. piece. Yeah. Uh, so now let's cover wh where to finance, where you can get a loan like this. I mean, some people's first reaction might be where they think, you know, they go to Wells Fargo or to, you know, yeah. Bank of America or whatever to get your to get your mortgage. Those are all options. Uh, right. Most of those banks will loan investments. They're not the friendliest when it comes to programs, rates, and uh, the, the ways to get it. But let's talk about where we can get some of these. My, my favorite, what people – that they cringe when they hear this, but hard money for those that don't know, uh, most of my investors that are listening do know, but if you're, if you're new and you're thinking about doing this and you've heard the term hard money, Dan, tell them what hard money is. Hard money is basically just somebody that has cash that's willing to loan it out. Uh, and they're willing to take the risk on you, but it's going to come at a price. Uncle Vito back in the Uncle back. Vito, is that who yeah, it is? Right. I mean, right. is that, if it, you don't pay, you know, you don't walk. Is that sort of those sort of things? Almost. Almost. Yeah, yeah close. <laughs> yeah, it's just a higher interest rate. They're going to get, you know, probably 10 to 12%. Sometimes I've heard 15%. They're going to get two to five points on the transaction. Tell them what that means. Just means, you know, if you have a $100,000 loan, you know, at closing, they're going to ask for either 2000 up to maybe 5000 you know, so you got to build that into your, your model. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 and it's doable. You know, if you, again, buy right. That we always talk about. Yeah. And I want to, yeah, buy right is the biggest thing with anything. Yep. You, know, you can make anything make sense if you buy it right. But hard money for me, I, I want to discuss this just for a second because I had I had to come around to it. You yep. know, when I first, uh, six, seven years ago, and uh, when I first started concentrating on. When you were a young pup. It, yeah, yeah. When <laughs> I was 20. Yeah. You like right. that. <laughs> uh, when I first started learning about hard money and I would hear that. You know, because I've got good credit, and I would hear right. it's twelve percent. Right? Like, what is this? I mean, it sounds like a terrible credit card I had in college or something. But I had to learn that my goal, my individual goal, let, let's say a rental, not a mm -hmm. flip. My individual goal with that rental is to keep it and pay it off. Correct. My end goal is to have a free and clear eight hundred dollar a month rental. Right. That's my goal. Right. If I can get some assistance along the way that I can't provide myself. So if I couldn't at the time, I, you know, I can't pay 40 grand for a house. So I needed help getting there. I didn't right. want to go to your traditional mortgage company and try to get a loan that way. That I mean that they almost need a DNA yeah. sample. So, <laughs> you know, so going to hard money w was an option, but I thought, God, 12%. But what I had to concentrate on and to keep reminding myself is I have an end goal. Mm -hmm. If people along the way are going to help me get to that end goal and they make money along the way as well, but they're willing to help me, I had to accept that. Yeah, it's capitalism. It, it's exactly <laughs> what it is. I had to accept that and to keep moving forward right. to get to that end goal. So I'm it might not be my first place to go. You no. know, I might want to exhaust some other options, but hard money in this interest rate doesn't bother me like it used to. Well, I'm, I'm hoping the other people listening are, are catching on to what I'm saying. Yeah, and the thing I'd add to that is just, Say so, say so you had ten thousand, five thousand, ten thousand dollars in the bank, you know, versus putting that into that first asset. When you rather keep that to the side mm -hmm. and, and use the hard money, does that make sense? Yeah. So you absolutely. have that cushion. That's that's the biggest piece that I see people get into this business is they don't have a backside cushion. Right. You know, so hard money is a way to allow that. So you didn't you don't exhaust your liquidity. You get to keep it to the side and then use other people's money, mm -hmm. which I meant to to. to tell you that at the beginning like doesn't really have to do with the financial institutions but a great book about this is rich dad poor dad you yeah. Know, yeah that, that heard you talk about you know uh, using opm op other people's money so mm -hmm. um this is that concept played out in which which way one of these six or seven options you know is best for you all right yeah. so I, I mentioned hard money it was one of the things you've got to get accustomed to and used to dan what's another one that uh that we go to you know friends and family mm -hmm. uh, you know typically you're going to see you know, a fair deal would be, you know, five, six, maybe 7%, you know, and, and I'll give you an example. We did one uh, with a local friend of ours that was trying to put his mom's money to work yeah. and she was getting an annuity at half a percent, 1%. And, uh, uh, he loaned us, you know, probably a couple hundred thousand dollars to buy, you know, at the time it was, I think $20,000 houses. So we bought 10 houses sure. through him at $200,000 with 6% interest. 
So great program. Great program. He wins. His mom's happy. You know, we're ex- ecstatic. You know, and so we end up. You know, and you put that on different am- amortizations. We put that on. I think we put those on five year notes. That's literally cool. five five five. So it means we amortize it over five and paid it off in five. That is another way that a lot of people don't even look at or look into is to go after. They think, how am I going to hit up, you know, personally my family, family for it? Right. But if there's money that's just sitting there, it might not be as crazy Part idea sale, as you huh? think because, uh, you know, they've got an asset that they can lean on, you know, some real property yeah. if something were to happen. Um, well, that's just the part that you got to, you know, and that will go down a tangent with that, but that's finding a good attorney friend that you partner with one of your partners and explaining to your family or friend of the whole promissory note and putting it on the deed of trust. And That's they, right. they've got, you know, access to, and if you don't, if you mess up, you know, that house becomes their recourse. I mean, they have recourse. a way to come back and get their right. money. So, I mean, it is, it's safe for them. Safer. Safer. Yeah, yeah. I guess. I wouldn't say it's, you know, cause you're not used to it. If you're just loaning money to it, say I loaned it to you and I had known nothing about rental property. Yeah. And then you start messing up. I got to really know what I'm going to do. So there is some risk, there. some risk, but mm-hmm. at least there's a hard, real property piece, something you can put your hand on. Yeah. You know, I mean, like if you loan to a business and the business goes under, then what, you know, right. You know, you've got nothing, just, right. just debt. This and this situation, it makes me feel a little bit more comfortable for the lender that they can put their hands on something, you know, they can mm-hmm. recoup some of that money. It's a process, but at least you're not out. All of it, period, because right. the business failed. Uh, friends and family, hard money. What, what it's, what's another one that that my, you go to? This you know is my your favorite. favorite. I know I, this one. You knew it for us. So I, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Owner financing. <laughs> yeah, I love it. love owner financing, and I get that question a lot. And uh, um, and in fact, Douglas and I were talking about it this morning. My partner just, uh, you know, how do you go about doing owner finance? And he and I were emailing last night about one that potential for us. Uh, that I submitted to a guy for two houses, and I said all he can say is no. I mean, right, <laughs> right. So, I mean, it's... so number one, you got to ask, and number two, all they can say is no, right. And even if they say no, then I say, well, would you do partial owner financing? <laughs> <laughs> you well, know, so huh? yeah, yeah. yeah. So they, you know, their ears perk up, you know, like, and there's some tax advantages, and I, <clears throat> I think that'd be good to, you know, something we're we're you know I'm working on right now is just being able to articulate that to, to people that potentially are selling what is the tax there is tax advantages mm-hmm. of not just having a whole you know selling a hundred thousand dollar house you know versus owner financing it to me over because not every seller has got to have the cash right now that's right they can be selling for various different so, reasons but not everyone has got to have the money right this second and you got to create a story for them you got to say all right what are you going to do with that hundred thousand without being nosy but sure you know all right you're selling it it's free and clear you got a hundred thousand what are you going to go invest in and they're like oh well i'm probably gonna put in a cd Again. Oh, at 1%, and, you know, maybe, maybe. And I'm like, well, then owner finance it to me at 6%. And now you got a 6% return in your money. You got the headaches, the calls. Sounds like you've done this before. Am I selling it? <laughs> sounds, like, sounds like you've sold this before. I got my pitch. Yeah, yeah I guess. Right. I yeah, mean, yeah. that is good though. I mean, it's. It, I've been doing it since uh, 2000. I think my first one was 2004 and I'm almost paid off those two. And I tried to call that guy this week and just, and, and try to pay him off early and he didn't want to. It's the funniest thing. He's like, he didn't want the money. No, he's like, I love my payment every month, and I don't want the tax burden this this year of getting a you know big check from you. So let's just keep on rolling for the next year and a half till you pay him off. And I'm like, okay, you know. That's still though. That's great because he he was in a position a cool to where story. he loved it. Yeah, that is yeah. cool because that and I didn't because I haven't done owner financing deals myself. That to me is interesting. What are you going to do with that money? That's a great, great, great. Like I almost want to stop the show and talk about just that. <laughs> what are you gonna do I with the money? I love yeah. finding different ways to not sell something, but to logically well, it's, explain it's a make it. A, we'll make it a win-win. Yeah, like that you, is a win-win. That's a win-win. I'm winning because I get the houses. That's what I yeah. want to do. I want to be involved with. They win because they keep getting a return on that investment, you know, and not have to put that cash, you know, because he's getting. I don't know, eight hundred dollars a month, and he's retired. He's eighty years old. He loves that eight hundred bucks. His house has been paid off. He's just enjoying retirement, so eight hundred bucks pays for a lot when pretty much you're getting Social Security and all your expenses. You know what I mean? Like, so it just it's a good compliment. All right, uh, so I love this pitch. So if you're talking to, <laughs> I do, man. This is great. You'll take up the rest of the show. I am for, talking you know, about this. I, if you're out there and you're you're interested in buying rentals and you've been talking about owner financing, ask the seller what they plan on doing with that money. 
And if they say if they don't if they hesitate at all, yeah. it means they don't have a plan for it. If they right. do have a plan for it, they'll tell you or they'll say, "Oh, I have, you know, I have I mean, another investment I'm going to put this in." But if they don't, ask them how much they're going to make. That is yeah. such a great comeback to that is you're going to put it in a CD and get right. 3 quarters of a percent. Well, you they're, find they're, it to me for six. They're thinking the headache piece. You just got to – how do you take that headache? A headache is not the right – I guess for some people it is, but just the burden, the, the – they knew how many things they have to do with dealing with that house, pay the taxes, insurance, da da da, da. And you're like, well, it's just going to be one payment for me. I take all that. Yeah. That goes away. I'm, I'm creating a shield between you, and, and it's a whole different ball game. You know, and, and so I love it. That's yeah. fantastic. If anybody takes anything out of the show today, it's, it's how to negotiate an owner finance. Yeah. Man. If I was a wholesaler, you know, a lot of our listeners and viewers are wholesalers, man. I, if they're the first one to a house and the guys, you know, it's free and clear, that's my first, uh, you know, <laughs> let's make an owner finance, get you signed up, and I'll get you a payment for the next 15 years. Owner know? would much rather have that deal than 30 cents on the dollar. 30 cents on the dollar for the house. That's right. Um, all right, I'm live in the studio with Dan Butler with Crest Core Realty. We are talking about financing investments this morning. Uh, before going to the bank, we talked about what to cover, things to consider when you're talking about uh, your financing and, and borrowing. Where to finance is what we're covering now. Hard money, uh, we explain what that is. Friends and family, you can always go to them. But the owner finance, we just we just hit a, a little golden bucket of jewels here I, I love i love the owner financing negotiating why don't you make it a deal for you to do that by the end of the month well, get an owner finance august, deal august first i think i might and i think i'm gonna You're start a competitive off guy I, I am let's see who can do it first you or me oh well that didn't come that isn't fair <laughs> <laughs> holy crap the patriots playing a high school that's game. right i just uh, know how competitive you right. are but i am and i i am competitive and i i do like that uh man, I love that. All right, so I'll, we'll, let's keep moving. Yeah. Heloc, Helocs, home equity line of credit. You've done this, I know, or Since, or if I remember, this is how you started. That's right. Okay, explain explain how you did it. I mean, I understand sure. how it goes, but explain so how you used your Heloc. So people, you know, there's a misconception. Heloc, you know, when they were first created, you know, I think there's some people back there that said, "Hey, I want a way to finance my boat or my my yeah. second home." Or it wasn't intended for this, I'm sure. Wasn't intended for this, but. What we've said is like, you know, what I've learned over the years from a lot of my mentors is when you pay down your house and your your house appreciates, and there's a word for it, uh, I think it's called arbitrage, is the difference between, say your house, when you bought it, it's worth 200 now it's worth 250 But in the meantime, you paid it down to 175 You got $75,000 in equity in that house that you could do something with. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying just do something constructive with it. Don't do something. Not buy. Don't go buy the Mercedes. boat. The sixty thousand dollars boat. The boats are sixty thousand dollars now. But don't go buy the Mercedes or the Ra yeah. Range Rover or something like that. Yeah. Go put it to work. Yeah. So you know, as you know, my story. I, I would. I had an eighty thousand dollar line, and I would just buy two forty thousand forty thousand dollars houses, and I would just leapfrog them. Pay buy one, buy the second one, pay off or refinance the first, buy another going. one, keep going, just just leapfrog one after the other. How many times did you do it? Do you know? I don't know. 100, 100 plus, yeah. Did you really on the same HELOC? On, on the same, same, on oh, same, same HELOC. Home? Yeah, if you're talking about just that HELOC. That's yeah, what I mean. At least 100. Wow. Times, yeah. So if you're listening to this now and you have, I mean, and you have equity into your home, there's nothing keeping you from starting your rental portfolio no. today. No, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, when I, I was reading a book this weekend, you know, Knowledge is Power, and it was just talking about that whole, I, I, I forget that the houses have gone up since my last HELOC. I did my last loan for four years ago. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, the house is probably worth, you know, forty plus thousand more. So I could get another thirty thousand in my line yep. just by taking it to the bank. because they love the people. The banks love Helox. Sure, they, why they love not? Love that product, you know. And so if he goes bad, they buy a home for fifty yeah, grand. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, so I'm going back, and and to your point, they're anxious. I mean, I just shot one email. I said, well, we'd love to help you. Be back on Tuesday. We'll get you, you know, lined up, and and now I'm gonna increase my line. Hopefully, twenty, thirty thousand. Just so by appraise it. Just by getting a four hundred dollar appraisal, and hopefully the interest rates better because when I first did it, they were a little bit higher. So, so yeah, I mean, HELOC Great is a strong, strong, strong. Which then, you know, you don't leave it on a HELOC forever. Some people do if they yeah. just want a couple of houses. So we'll talk about the difference in in long you roll term. that into your long term. Mm -hmm. Same thing with you know friends and family, owner finance. To me, those are short, long term. You know, at least three to five year. You know, which you're amortizing fifteen or or more. Hard money is a short term. Yep. HELOC is a short term, and then you're going to roll into you know one of our next three options, which is a mortgage company. 
So we've got hard money, friends and family, owner finance, yep. home equity line of credit, your HELOC, and then just regular mortgage companies. Now, is there any challenges that you've faced over the years with this? I mean, I know there are challenges, but what are what are some that you've faced with just going to a traditional mortgage company? Um, to me, it's not. To me, that's on the bottom of the list of routes to take. Yes, but in a my lot, opinion, now a lot of our listeners, because they've chosen, uh, they want that hard that that fixed rate for thirty years. The mortgage company, you know, is is a great option because mm-hmm. they have that Fannie Mae product for investors, which you know you can buy it at closing with twenty five percent down, I think it is, but yes. it's fixed rate probably for thirty years, four four and a half percent for thirty years. So you've locked in for the next thirty years on that that one property, right? So there there are pluses uh, to do that, and you know. The, the I talked to a lady in Mississippi about this last week. Her bank, her, her bank that she runs uh, for the mortgage, she just talked about how intensive the paperwork is and the regulations and keeping up the... Our crash in 2007 you know, did that to us. That's right. And that, so I think that's definitely something to look at. I think Steve Big House, I mean, his, his he product... He's on is, my list for next. He's yeah. a national bank. Uh, Steve is going to begin to sponsor the show next month and does a ton of investing or investor loans, loans in Memphis specifically. Yeah. He's out of Seattle, but uh, he he's going to sponsor the show. It's something that he is wanting to grow his business. We've had him into our office and yeah. talked to yeah. a group of investors before. So, yeah, Steve Bickhouse is one that uh, we lean on from a national perspective. Local banks, these are, you know, local banks are kind of my favorite, and – it's it's pretty self-explanatory why you know you can go in and going back up to things to consider when we talked about relationships versus mm-hmm. one-offs we have got you know Tully and and Chuck are two guys that we, yeah. we use a lot along with Brighton but a lot of my investors over the years have gone to these local guys they run their branch or you know run the southern part of the bank right you know southern region of the bank uh, and can make decisions in that office. That's what I enjoy about it. If a guy, if I can look across the desk at him and tell him, "Hey, I'm this is a business plan. I've got, there's some legitimacy to this. Uh, make a decision to loan me the money." Versus, if you do go to the big banks, they're keying in your info and they're yeah, clicking just, enter. And you're just a, a new number. I, I learned that uh, with one of the big banks in town. They're just sending the data to regions and some underwriters looking at numbers and just making a decision. Local bank, a Brighton, uh, you know, Tully at Planners or, or Chuck at First uh, Financial. First Financial. Mm-hmm. You know, those guys are looking at you, looking at the product, looking at your plan, you know, and, and they they actually turn into your salespeople. They go before the board yes. and get you approved, you know, and they're selling you. That's right. You know, now that your finance has got to be in order. You've got to be in order. But I mean, if, if there's what I like about it is if you're pushing that gray line, not in it, but if you're pushing it. Yeah. And Chuck goes into, or Tully, or Brighton guys, or whoever, go into their board meeting every week and say, hey, I've got an applicant here. Uh, he's this, he's that, he's this, and he's behind you and believes in you. You're right. He turns yeah. into a salesman for you, for you. and your process and your That's business. Right. It's extremely important to me to keep those relationships going. You know, and they get creative. You you very. Know. They know exactly how to get creative. You don't yeah. know what you're doing. I mean, yeah. when it comes to that, unless you've been a banker, they can get extremely creative on – how they package your loan. Right. I mean, I've even heard of uh, you know these guys taking your loan, putting it in with four or five other guys in, in a huge lump sum, and saying, you know, taking right. that to the board. Hey, this is right. what I want to loan out. Right. Uh, so we're talking this morning financing investments. Uh, of, we're with Dan Butler with Crush Core Realty. Uh, we've talked about what you do before you go to the bank. Some of the things you should uh, go over and and cover with your own you know individual personal accounting. Uh, things to consider, asset protection, uh, terms that you want in the uh, in the deal, and then of course relationships that you're building. Where to finance this uh, th- these properties? We talked about hard money. Uh, some of your friends and family that you can uh, connect with and, and develop a relationship, a business relationship with. Owner financing. Dan's one of Dan's favorites. Uh, HELOC, your home equity line of credit that you can use to uh, mm-hmm. to begin purchasing properties. Mortgage companies, straight, you know, your, your big conglomerates there, Fannie Mae products, uh, national banks. We talked about Steve Bighouse. And then local banks. I mean, that's my favorite. That That's the one I go to. I love the, the, the relationships that I can build with, mm-hmm. with these guys from from a local perspective. 
what are some of our next steps then, Dan? We've we've talked about, you know, before we go to the bank, things to consider, where we're going to get these loans. What's our next step after that? Well, you know, I think that, that – once you've considered your your asset protection, the terms you want, the no, not what we call non-negotiables, um, you know, and then what kind of financing can you do a HELOC? Can you do, uh, you know, are you okay with hard money? Mm-hmm. You know, or you just want to go the Fannie Mae route with, you know, uh, some of our partners that we partner with, or do you want to go local bank? You know, you got to think that through. And then what I would encourage our listeners and, and viewers to, to think about is now create the plan. That's right. You know, like, don't just come, you know, it's the hardest conversation for me when somebody says, well, I just want to get into buying real estate. <laughs> I mean. Well, great. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, you have a great day. That's then. right. Yeah. All right. Well, so <laughs> how are you going to, you know, how are you going to finance it? What are you going to, you know, what are you going to do when the economy tanks? What are you going to, you know, how many do you want? And I was telling the story to some guy Saturday, you know, I sat on a plane years ago and just, I wrote out a plan to, for 300 houses. Mm-hmm. And just had it all laid out, and so then I could articulate that to the bank of here's what I want to do over the next seven to ten years. That probably went miles with the bank. Yeah, because I knew I thought it through. Here's my plan. I'm gonna use my HELOC. I'm gonna come to you every you know. At that at that time, I had several banks you know in a row kind of mm-hmm. lined up, but mm-hmm. you know I was confident in my plan. Mm-hmm. I thought about all the you know the devil advocate. You know, the shortfalls. What how, could they say? You know, like I've got my W-2 and I can sustain. I'm going to not have car debts and I'm not going to have this and that so that I have the cash. So you got to think through all that. And, and you know, for our listeners, you know, I'm happy to talk through, you know, because we can go talk about that for hours. Of sure. create, I call it creating a story, you know, and creating well, a plan. Well, you're presenting yourself. You're selling That's yourself. Right. You're selling yourself. That's right. So you don't want to, you know, just like I saw a great thing on LinkedIn. The guy posted about, you know, he had an interview and the guy didn't know what he wanted to do in life. And so he cut the interview short and said, thank you for coming. You know, like and that was it. That was it. So it's kind of the same thing. You got to have a plan. You can't just say, well, I just want to buy, you know, some houses. So loan me the money. So loan me the money. It's like, you got to think through. Yeah. And not just a story they, they don't want to hear a sob story or hear your, they want to hear your plan. What, what do you plan on doing? If we loan, you know, what's your next step after we give you this money? What, what yeah. is your process? What are your goals? Uh, and the better in my, in my the better you lay that out for them, mm-hmm. it seems like if you're, that's one of those things where if you're on the line or the borderline of, of them wanting to loan to you, if you don't do that, I say you don't get it. If yeah. you go through that process, set everything up like we've talked about here and present yourself in the best way you can, I think that, I think that might push you over the edge. Yeah. And I think you, you hit it, you know, earlier of just the relationship part. I can't that's stress right. that enough. I mean, the relationships now have flipped to where, you know, I've gotten a such strong relationships with the bank. I'll say, I'll call up and say, I'm thinking about this. What do y'all think? What do y'all think? So I got that, you know, they're, they know I'm, you know, methodical and thinking through stuff. So they're, they're going to, they're going to spend the time and say, well, have you thought about this, this, and this? And I go back and, yeah, and, and then hammer that out and then come back to them again, you know, but they're going to be your advocate, you know, because they know you didn't just jump into, I'm going to go buy this business over here, you yeah. know, or, or buy this house, you know, you really thought through. Um, the process and the way to go. So if you take anything out of this to me today, you learn how to negotiate an owner finance deal. I love that. I'm taking that out of here today. Using other people's money to build Using other people's money and then, uh, and then uh, developing relationships. Yeah, that was it. All right, guys, we're running short on time today. Dan, thanks for coming in. We could talk for hours about this financing. If you guys have any questions, give me a call. 901-619-6170. We'll be happy to, answer any questions you got for us. Thank you for listening, guys. This is the Memphis Real Estate Hour on 107.9, The New Voice. CBS News at the top of every hour and the most local talk in the Mid-South. This is KWAM Memphis. CBS News, I'm Peter King. A new chapter in the saga of the Trump campaign and Russia. The Washington Post reports that the president dictated the exact words.